I want to tell you something about St. Mary's Hospital Medical School. It happens to be a hundred years old this year, and it also happens to be the place where I've just qualified as a doctor. But it isn't about that that I want to speak. Mary's is one of the medical schools attached to London University. It's still comparatively young and still very active. You've probably heard of our prowess on the rugger field, but I want to take you behind the scenes to show you a little of the medical student's life and rather more of the research that goes on there. Of course, the prime task of a medical school is to turn out qualified men and women. Some will become general practitioners, your own GPs. Some will become specialists, physicians, surgeons, gynecologists and the rest of them. Others will devote themselves to the pursuit of knowledge, science we call it. But as I shall tell you, I think that there is no other institution in the world whose contributions have done so much to save life and suffering as Mary's. There are nearly 500 students working in the buildings in Parade Street. Although they appear large, they're not big enough for the job they're doing, and the time has come to extend them. At Mary's, they give students a full life, with plenty of work and plenty of play. In the Department of Physiology, where students study the mechanism of the human body, there's sometimes an opportunity for both. These two men, on fixed bicycles, are working hard enough to sweat, and the air they breathe is weighed and measured. In fact, it's the amount of carbon dioxide given out which is measured, and by working back from this result, one can calculate the amount of oxygen taken from the air. Oxygen is the gas which is needed by the body to liberate energy required for movement of any sort. This is part of the elementary study of human breathing, respiration we call it. And of course it's of special interest to people like me who try to run races. Even more, it's one of the vital subjects that a medical school must teach so that the students have a background on which to base their future treatment of sick patients. But teaching cannot go on without research. And here, in the medical school, as well as in the Wright Fleming Institute next door, the two go hand in hand. This, for example, is an instrument called a flame photometer, which reduces the time taken for a chemical analysis from a period of hours to a matter of minutes. The biochemistry department use a chemical technique which is quite different. In an incubator, which is kept at a controlled temperature, we have a stock of locusts. Their saliva is collected and used to break down human body fluids for analysis. These locusts are insects which have to be handled very skillfully. When frightened or disturbed, they give up about one drop of saliva, which is collected on a pipette. They are then returned to their warm incubator unhurt. The advantage of this method is that the ferment can be used for analysis of minute quantities of the substance under investigation. Like the flame photometer, it's another example of the way modern methods have increased the scope of research. Now here's quite another story. More than 60 years ago, Augustus Waller, the first professor of physiology at Mary's, developed this apparatus and recorded the small electrical impulses which occur with each beat of the heart. Dr. 
Dr. Waller was working in a new field. His apparatus was primitive, but his discoveries gave rise to the electrocardiograph of today, used all over the world for the investigation of heart disease. Sixty years later, study of the heart, of respiration, and of the circulation of the blood is still continuing relentlessly at St. Mary's. In the physics department is an artificial blood circulation system worked by a mechanical heart. A radioactive tracer, one of the new products of nuclear science, is injected into the bloodstream and its progress measured by a scintillation counter and recorded on a graph. This type of experiment can be used to measure the circulation time of the blood in a way which was impossible only a few years ago. But I haven't told you yet, you know, about the most important achievement of all, the discovery of penicillin. In the 1920s, Professor Alexander Fleming, a bacteriologist at the hospital, was studying the action of antiseptics on the healing of wounds. And he found, like others, that the action of the antiseptics on the patients was more harmful than that of the bacteria. Through this very window, just 25 years ago, a speck of mould was blown into Professor Fleming's laboratory and settled on one of his culture plates. By observation and deduction, he made the discovery which was to become a turning point in the history of medicine and surgery and was to save countless lives. Here is Sir Alexander, in the original laboratory, working at his microscope, his instruments, and his cultures of bacteria. Today, the ordinary microscope which can magnify up to 3,000 times, is for certain purposes assisted by new and powerful instruments of research. The time-lapse camera will take pictures down a microscope and automatically record the growth of bacteria for hours on end. This particular apparatus was designed and made at the medical school. This film shows how the result of hours of continual observation can be studied in a matter of seconds. It gives a glimpse of the way in which germs, microbes, and bacteria, call them what you will, multiply a thousandfold in a sick body. Penicillin and the other antibiotics that have followed its discovery can now bring death to many bacteria without harming the body in which they are living and growing. This is the electron microscope, which, with a magnification of 100,000, is typical of the kind of costly equipment now needed by Marys to join battle with the viruses, which are yet smaller than bacteria and cause many fell diseases in man and animals. I've told you all too little of a great story, but I hope I've opened your eyes to some achievements of St. Mary's Hospital Medical School. Achievements, as I said, unparalleled by any other institution. This work of teaching and research must be continued into its second century with all the support that men and money, buildings and equipment, tradition and goodwill can together give it. Indeed, that you and I can give it. <laughs>